everyone, it's Haley, and today we're back with another very exciting video. Today is a conversation with the incredible Yvonne Orji. Hey, Boo. Hey. Hey. I'm so <laughs> happy to have you here. So grateful you're on this incredible show called Insecure, which I'm a big fan of the show. Mm -hmm. I've watched every season. Thank you. Who did you think was more wrong, Molly or Issa? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. I feel like you guys both had things that you were wrong about. That is actually the right answer, so thank you. But I don't feel like it's an unsalvageable situation. We'll see, season five coming soon. Oh, oh my God, okay, I can't wait. We both, in different ways, work in this industry where I feel like a lot of the time people misunderstand God and believing in Jesus and Sometimes it can be difficult to be in this industry believing what we believe in. So you have a book that's coming out called Bamboozled by Jesus. Full title is Bamboozled by Jesus, How God Tricked Me into the Life of My Dreams. And I kind of got some flack. Like there's the sentiment like, does Jesus bamboozle people? He's a loving, he's a loving God. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But he will tell you to do some stuff that either you don't want to do or you are not certain how doing it is going to get you to a place that you don't even know you can go to. And so that's part of the process. The whole point of being bamboozled is that you get tricked into the life of your dreams. Mm -hmm. So I'm the child of immigrants. I thought I was gonna be a doctor, but my last name is Orgy. So can you imagine paging Dr. Orgy to gynecology? <laughs> I was like, you know what? Nah, <laughs> I should definitely be a comedian. When God told me to do comedy, I kind of had this back and forth. I was like, nah fam, you don't know me. That's also how I talk to God. Like, nah fam, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is so amazing because it's like people think there's like a certain way where you need to have this certain type of relationship with God, but like, he's our friend. I give him the side eye all the time and he'd be like, but daughter though, like who else you gonna trust? And I was like, you right, but I don't like it. I was scared. I had a choice to make. Do I do the thing that I say I, I believe? Do I do the thing that I sing about in all the songs that I'm learning at in church? Like, cause I don't want to half step this relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I was like, all right, well, he must know something about me that I don't know about me yet. And he did. <laughs> and that was 2001. Wow. Cut to 2020, I released my first HBO comedy special. Mama, I made it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Which is amazing and incredible. And you're an actress. You're on this show where you are doing sex scenes and cursing and doing things that a lot of people who are Christian would probably see that and be like, oh, well, you're not a real Christian because yeah. you're doing sex scenes and you're doing this. And in a similar way, sometimes I'll, you know, for my job, I have to show skin mm -hmm. or like, I'll get photographed in like underwear or lingerie or like something and people are like, well, that's not a good representation because you're not modest and you're not this. Yeah. And Well, first let me just say, God knew who he could trust with certain bodies because if I had your body, I would wear pasties to church every day. Oh my God. <laughs> just crop tops and pasties. I didn't even know Acting was a profession. Entertainment was not a thing that I thought like I could go into. And so when he brought me to Hollywood, I was like, all right, fam, so what does this look like? And so we had conversations of like, all right, is cursing off limits? And he was like, nah. So I was like, okay, well, how do we navigate sex scenes? I just personally was like, I'm not showing anybody my areolas for nothing. I always wanted to say, I wanted to leave something to the imagination for my husband, wherever, 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 wherever he is, which camera, wherever he is. Hey, hey, you watching this? Just call me. I think I also like take a place where I'm like, okay, I wouldn't want to ever be shot naked, but like props to any woman that's comfortable doing that. Everyone's own preference and choice. I just knew that I didn't want that. So I remember before even signing the contract, there like like item seven was like the nudity waiver. And I called one of the producers to just be like, do you think she's gonna be naked? You know, she and Molly read as just this corporate chick who can switch from, you know, C-suite to like the hood. There was only one episode written, so we hadn't gotten to her backstory. I asked a question and I felt comfortable signing, but then obviously, you know, more episodes are written. Molly has a sex scene. I'll never forget season one, like episode six, and I was like, oh, this is, oh, this is happening. But by then, like, I'm the one you cast. Like, it's like, I've, I had been telling them all season, like, Y'all know I can't show my areolas. My mom is still alive. Like, I don't want to be taken out the will. And they were like, you good. I don't want to be taken out of the will. <laughs> my parents got land in Africa. I don't want to be taken out the will, you know. 
I made like a four minute compilation video to be like, this is what I'm comfortable with. Because I also knew I couldn't go in there and be like, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, so what I'm not gonna do. They'd be like, great, let's recast her now. So I had to meet them where they were in order for me to understand how to help them meet me where I was. Cause yeah. I was nervous, like they're gonna be like, here's where, here's where the road ends. Right. Thankfully, like that was not the situation. Cause unfortunately in this industry that does happen a lot, like yeah. you go in, you say something, you know, you're not comfortable with, and then they're like, okay, well there's 10 other people that would be that happy would yes. to show their areolas, so. Happy. <laughs> I definitely did get Christians who were like, I just don't understand how you can say you love God. And still, and I'm like, I'm high key making it easier for the next Christian who wants to enter this field. When they deal with a director or production company, they can be like, we know how to work with you. I think people think that there's only one way to be a Christian. They did that with Jesus. And it's just like, no, he is the Christ. Like we, there is no Christianity without him. Your relationship with God is not gonna be the same as mine. Mm -hmm. And not the same as yours or any other person in this room or in the world. Like we all have different relationships yes. and ways that we relate to the Bible and relate to Jesus. And to me, my relationship with Jesus is, I believe that he was about love yes. and acceptance. I don't like when people like use God as the scapegoat for like acting like ridiculous. A pastor of mine said, if you're the only Jesus that some people will ever see is God in trouble. It doesn't mean that you have to proselytize like, do you know him? Have you met him? Yeah. There will be seasons where you'll be able to like pray with people and just be like, hey, if you want to say this prayer, I can offer it with you. I'm not the one that can do the persuading. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It has to be God that persuades somebody's heart to believe in what I believe. But see, in you doing your job by just being your most authentic self, it's what a pastor from behind used to call Gentile bait. It's like your life being happy, your life being the version of it that you want it to be, it's the thing that will attract somebody to be like, what is okay, it what, about? Well, what is yeah. it? Like, okay, well, if I, if I don't know where to go to find the, the answer, if, I don't, if I'm not gonna pick up the Bible, I see a walking version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so your life is a ministry, whether you want it to be or not. I talk about in the book how I wanna live my life in a way where someone can say, I'll have what she's having. Not that they want to be me, but like when you go to a restaurant and you're so hungry, and then like you look over and the couple next to you is like, mm, so good. And then you're just like, yo, I have what they're having. And I'm a human being who still makes mistakes and is flawed and is going to continue to make mistakes and be flawed. But I do believe that when someone is persuaded, they're persuaded by God and it's not my job to do that. I can only tell you what I know yeah. myself. Doesn't mean it's gonna be the same for you, but the ingredients are all there and this is what it is. It's a journey and we strive for perfection, um, but we also have a loving God who like graces us to understand how to be in relationship with him. As a human being, I don't believe perfection exists. Can you talk to my mom? Because as Nigerians, like perfectionism is like our love language and I'm trying to over, <laughs> I have two therapists on deck trying to help me undo my perfectionism. I'm a crazy people pleaser. Like yes. I want oh. everyone to like me. And one thing I say in the book is that um, opinions are like booty holes. Everybody got them. Exactly. Everybody. I love that saying. <laughs> I live by that saying, yes. so. They're going to think whatever they're going to think about you. God bless them. As a reforming people pleaser, I was like, our job is not to necessarily be relatable like that's like I, I put that in the book my roommate told me she was like you trying to be relatable is actually keeping you from like living out your purpose mm -hmm. the goal is to be respected and be relevant to your purpose you're trying so hard to prove to you and the world that you haven't changed the core of who you are has not changed mm -hmm. how's ever what is this 14 15 feet ceilings everybody don't got that as much as you try to like stay close and touchable and like, look at me, I, I'm regular. Nothing is regular about your life. True, I know. And that was something, you said that to me the other day and I was like, that is so true. My life is like super not regular, like my job is not regular. I'm like, but I am still really normal and like, yes. but my life is not normal. And but two things can be true. Yeah. You at your core could be a wonderful soul, a beautiful human being and also live in a mansion. It's just that sometimes some celebrities and other people have tricked off like what success looks like. So now success is synonymous to like being an a-hole. I feel like I'm like on a journey that is like never stopping and hopefully never stops because I constantly want to learn yes. and grow and evolve. People forget like the journey that they were on when they were your age, right? If I end up seeing a comment that's like, you're this and you're a and then I click on their page and it's like, 
mom of four, <laughs> Philippians 4.13, married, wife, God-fearing woman, and I'm just like, huh? How is that showing the love of God? Like, how is that winning souls? It's just what turns a lot of people off, I believe, to church. I've met Christian people that are just super judgmental and made yes. me feel like I'm a bad person because I don't live my life the way they think I should yep. live my life. And I felt weird about certain, like, posting certain yeah. photos of myself or feeling like people in the church are gonna see this. Am I doing something wrong? Am I setting, like, a bad example? And the reality is, is like, it, no. Girl, and what I tell you, people are gonna talk about you whether you do good, bad, or nothing at all. If you showed up looking amazing, who she thinks she is? If you showed up looking horrible, ooh, I thought she had money. It, they're gonna talk about you one way or another. And that's something that I'm like really in the process of learning right now. Like everybody's always gonna have something to say. Yeah. I love the church with all my heart. I'm in the church. Okay, hello. Jesus is on the cover of my book. Trust me, and that cost me a lot. It cost, <laughs> it cost me a lot to keep Jesus on the cover. Like there was a price to pay for that. Right. There were some people who didn't want the book. I think the church has done a big disservice to a lot of people. Even just even when we were talking about sex, the conversation is just don't have sex. It's like okay, but. Okay, so what, what kind of like relationship should I have with right. myself and with like a, a significant other? Like, give me the well-rounded tools to be able to navigate whatever this journey is. You know, the way I was brought up, it was like, you're not gonna have sex until you're buried. It's just because I'm not, just yeah. because I'm not. Because yeah. the Bible says bad. don't. Yeah. And like, there not being any more of a bigger, in-depth conversation yeah. of like both sides of it. If you do, here's this conversation, and if you don't, here's this conversation. Yeah. Let's talk about both scenarios. Now, if you say, hey, listen, choice is yours. I'm gonna give you all the full gamut, right? Now I can have a conversation and I can decide like, okay, maybe I wanna wait till marriage. Maybe I wanna wait till I'm 18. Maybe I wanna wait till I'm in a committed relationship. Maybe I don't wanna wait at all, because there's that side of it too. Being a virgin is not the best thing about me, so I don't lead with that. Nor am I insulting whoever I'm talking to to make them think that all I think that they want is one thing. And then it's just like, oh, by the way, I just want to let you know this is a personal decision that I've made, and, and I'm really happy with it. They ask me all the time, they're like, oh, what would you say is like the biggest thing in your relationship, and you guys are really happy, and I'm like, it's our faith, it's what we believe yeah. in. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't even be together. And girl, on yeah. the album Justice, I said, oh, he loves this woman. I checked into a hotel like to have a staycation, and I was just like, hmm, oh, Justice's album just came out. Like, this is like before I knew we were even meeting. And I was like, dang, this is like love, love. Like, and I said, okay, so whatever Haley is to him, I need a, a male version of Haley for me. Because I was like, oh, this is like some real sentimental stuff right here. Yeah. Like, it's on some grown next level stuff. Being in this industry and believing what we believe in can be hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I appreciate you. I appreciate, you know, what you stand for. One thing that I believe in is I don't think fun and faith should be oxymorons. Yeah. Like, you should be able to have both. And mm -hmm. I think your life is an example of that. Like, how you can have authentic faith. It takes so much courage to be your most authentic self when you have millions of people thinking they know who you are right. when they have no idea. Thinking they know how they would handle situations if they were you when they could never be you. Yeah. What I've learned about you is you're gracious. Thank you. In this industry, you need gracious people because that's actually what wins more souls. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Now I'm like, so is this where I cry or? <laughs> No, I really needed to hear that. Thank you. I really appreciate that so much. You're dope. So Yvonne's book. Bamboozled by Jesus, How God Tricked Me into the Life of My Dreams. It's out now, so make sure you get your copy so you can read more about this incredible woman and her story, and I'm sure probably laugh a lot in this book. <laughs> I've been sitting here laughing and giggling, and I can't wait to read the book myself. So thank you again for being here. I got you, boo. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the notification bell. And we will see you next time.